Hi, friends. Welcome to photo seven. I just want to say hi to all of you and go over some basics, um, which may or may not be that clear uh, as an introduction in, in the uh, uh, in or on Canvas uh, on our class um, on our class page. So I'll I'll share the screen and we'll take a look at at that. Uh, so here is, uh, this is our class. Let me go to our home, home page. And I apologize because my, uh, my computer is very slow today. Our, our internet is very slow. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I apologize on my behalf and on behalf of AT&T. So, um, Come on. Well, this is the beginning of our class without the pictures. Um, not sure what's going on, but uh, here we have the syllabus. And uh, so I welcome you to Exploring Visual Expression, Photo 7. Um, my name is Sita Bhattacharji. Please call me Sita and dispense with my last name. Um, if I get your name, if I, if I pronounce your name incorrectly during our office hours or when I'm giving you uh, feedback for the assignments, please correct me. Uh, and as many times as it takes for me to get it right, as you can see, my name is I certainly don't uh, react negatively to being correct, to being corrected. So well, welcome, welcome to the class. Uh, using 35 millimeter photography as the medium, we will use natural forms, human and otherwise, and man-made objects as subjects for artistic photographic expression. Uh, so the world around us, right? Um, after covering the use of 35 millimeter cameras, lenses in film and other creative controls in photography, we will explore the basic principles of perception, light, color, composition, and visual awareness, and how these elements are used to make a successfully composed image. Through slides and videos, we will also look at the work of a number of photographers. You are encouraged to employ your own aesthetic, intellectual, and emotional concerns as a basis for your photographic expressions. So again, your life, your lives, uh, what's going on, what you consider important, both visually, um, you know, in terms of, of life <laughs> uh, and, and emotion, you know. Um, so using those things as a basis for your images, the, the point of the class, so to speak, is, is the successful image. What goes into the making of a successful image, one that, that works, uh, one that does what you, the photographer, want it to do. So you will need a digital camera for this class, uh, preferably a DSLR digital single lens reflex camera. Um, and that is a camera of this sort, but you don't have to have this type of camera in order to, in order to take this class and in order to make very successful images. So in the announcements for this class, which I'll show you in a little bit, I have an announcement that lists some suggestions of, of cameras that you might want to consider if you don't have one already. Um, Okay, so a, a camera that allows you some measure of control over the functions of the camera, such as the aperture and the shutter. Um, and as I said uh, just a moment ago, check out the announcements. Uh, if you have questions about your camera, please free, feel free to ask me. I don't pretend to know e each and every camera. Uh, so if you do have an instruction manual, that would be helpful. I do know the basic functions of most cam, you know, most types of cameras, but it is helpful. 
So due to the ongoing COVID pandemic and the measures put in place to slow its spread, which hopefully are, you know, we're coming to an end of, but uh, anyway, this class, which normally would be taught in person on campus is being taught online. Um, and of course, as this is an online class, you students must have regular access to a computer with high speed internet access and be familiar with, of course, basic computer and internet functions, uh, which I cannot imagine that any of you are not at this point, but there you have it. Uh, you must be familiar with Canvas as all course material and information will be found there. You will also need to be familiar with Zoom as we will be having periodic Zoom meetings. And my office hours will be via Zoom. And you'll find the uh, invitations for this meeting, invitations for these meetings in the Zoom meetings module on, on Canvas. There is a recommended text for the class. Uh, it is Complete Digital Photography by Ben Long. And the readings that are shown in the modules uh, correspond with the, uh, well, they correspond with the listings in the modules. Um, so here's a site uh, th that you can go to, to either to, I'm very sorry, to purchase either the printed version or the ebook. Um, again, you're not required to, um, to buy this. You will not be tested on any information that is not available to you on. Okay. It's nice to have, I think it's nice to have supplemental uh, sources of information, but again, not required. Okay, so onward. If for some inexplicable reason you desire or need to drop this course, it's your responsibility to do so. Um, if someone stops coming, I generally email and check in with, with the person to you know, see what's going on. Uh, if I don't hear back, I will usually drop the student, but I don't guarantee that I will drop the student. Um, and it would be really too bad to get a W on your transcript for having withdrawn, or even worse, an F uh, for not having dropped the class before the, the deadline to do so, um, just because you didn't you know, drop the class. So, so I certainly hope you don't need to drop the class um, and, or don't want to drop the class, but if you do need to or want to, please do so. The assignments are as, as listed on the syllabus, depth of field, motion, the portrait and self-portrait, favorite and not so favorite things. There will also be a final exam and a written assignment. Um, and I'll talk about these assignments and accessing that information in a few minutes. Grading, so evaluation or grading will be based upon a final exam, the timely submission of assignments, participation and overall effort. I do, I do accept late assignments. Um, points may be deducted depending on how late it is. Uh, I, always, uh, I always accept late submissions, except of course for the last assignment, which is due at the end of the term. Um, I also wanna point out that as this is a summer session class, the summer session is half as long as a regular quarter. So everything is kind of sped up. So things are due sooner. Projects and the exam will be graded on a 1000 point scale with a minimum passing grade of D minus or 60%. And so here is the breakdown of the points uh, or the grades and the equivalent point values, I should say. For some reason that is absolutely unknown to me, uh, even though it's supposedly been explained, we don't give C minuses. <laughs> so there's a jump from D from C down to D plus or from D plus up to C. The breakdown of the points, 
uh, is here as follows. Um, each, assign, each of the first assignments is worth 100 points. The fourth assignment is worth 200 points, so that's 500. The written assignment is worth 200 points, 700. The final exam worth 200 for 900 points. And finally, participation, 100 points for a total of 1,000 points. Participation, since we're not in class, I will talk about in a moment. The final exam uh, is available on Canvas during the last latter portion of the, of the term. And the final exam consists of a multiple choice, uh, 25 multiple choice questions to be gone over in greater detail further on in the term. So next, uh, what, what comprises the different grades, your work, so excellent, very good, average, below average, or failing. And uh, go ahead and check those out. I'm sure you have some idea of what they mean anyway, but uh, that's there for, for you. Um, all, class, all work that's done for this class and submitted for this class is to have been made for this class and over the course of this academic quarter or this summer and not therefore, prior to June 28th of 2021. So you may have done, you, have, you may have made some images that fit an assignment perfectly or five weeks ago. I don't want to see them as pertains to an assignment. So I want you to make new images for the assignments for this class. If you want to show me images that you've made in the past, I'm delighted to see them and to talk about them always. <clears throat> but again, for the assignments, I want you to make new images. Participation. Again, Though we're not meeting in person, participation, which includes asking questions, making comments, and discussing your work and the work of your classmates, is still an important facet of education and learning. <clears throat> the peer reviews that are assigned for each assignment are in place of the in-class discussions that we would be having for these assignments. So you will be randomly assigned two classmates per assignment whose work you must comment on or upon. What does this entail? You are to make comments and or observations about the images you've just seen. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Why? Um, what works for you? What does not? Why? So please don't just say, oh, wow, I really like the images. Or, wow, that just really didn't work for me. Explain and elaborate on that briefly, of course. Uh, so, as I say at the end, a brief or a relatively short paragraph should be enough. You don't have to write a huge tome, but I do want more than a sentence or two. <clears throat> In addition, Ask any questions that you might have about the images, uh, you know, how the images were made, what the artist's intentions were, and so on. And hopefully, you will get a response. Okay. I am sure that this does not refer to you, and of course, online, even less, right? But disruptive behavior um, is unacceptable, of course, and uh, in the normal you know, in the before time and hopefully the after time of uh, the pandemic, you know, of course you might be asked to leave class if you're misbehaving, but again, this is college, not middle school or high school. And uh, hopefully this will never be an issue, right? Academic integrity, <clears throat> excuse me, cheating, please don't cheat. Um, so I have a statement here, and this is, is you know, uh, 
summarizing uh, what you may find or should find um, in the in the uh, the student uh, the catalog for the class. Uh, sorry for the school, but as a student at Deanza College, you join a community of scholars who are committed to excellence in the process of teaching and learning. Academic honesty and honesty in general, of course, is fundamental to this community. We assume that all students will pursue their studies with integrity and honesty. That they, that pardon me, that the work they submit is their own original work, work that accurately represents the time and effort applied. Cheating, plagiarism of written or visual information, or knowingly furnishing false information in the classroom or to the instructor is academic dishonesty and is a violation of the honor code. Students are expected to be familiar with the honor code and to recognize that violations of this code are most serious and will be handled in a manner that fully represents the extent of the code and that befits the seriousness of its violation. And, so, and if you have any questions or concerns about this, or of course, anything else, please do ask. So more simply put, please don't cheat. Please do your own work. Um, why else take this class? Um, especially class where you're producing creative works, you know, they should be your own. But at any rate, uh, just do your best and do your own work. Thank you. Learning outcome. There is only one for this class. <clears throat> so upon completion of this class or course, students, this is what you should be able to do, interpret and utilize the photographic medium as a means of communication. So how best to use images, in this case, photographic images, to convey what you want to say. We have a student success center. Uh, the, the people who work, work there are very, very helpful. And if you have any need um, of workshops or tutoring or anything else, well, I shouldn't say anything else, but questions and so on, please visit the uh, Student Success Center. And the website is given right here. Uh, and they say stop by or to chat or sign up for things. And here are some of the things they offer. Uh, and you can sign up here with the enrollment uh, link. Disability support services. Um, we have a, a wonderful uh, disability support services, uh, service department, I suppose. And uh, if you have any issues, please contact them. Um, you know, if you, if you have any, any disabilities uh, that, that affect how you function uh, in school or, or otherwise, um, you should contact them because they can be very helpful. You're also, um, uh, you, you can also have, you know, get extensions, um, take a longer period for taking, have, sorry, have a longer period for taking exams. You can request a note taker and so on. So um, if you are in need of the, any of these things or more, contact them. Right, and here uh, they are located in the RSS building. And um, after this fall, hopefully we'll be completely back at school, but here's their website as well. And there's a phone number. Okay, important dates. Uh, as of when I made this list of dates, the De Anza website listed no dates for the summer session except for the beginning. And uh, the fact that we have this coming Monday off because it's the holiday for uh, Independence Day. Um, I do know that the last day uh, that was first listed as August 8th is now August 6th, the, the Friday. So that will be changed. Um, 
it is your responsibility to verify and keep track of deadlines and administrative dates. And here is the calendar, which doesn't actually say anything yet, but hopefully it will. And as soon as I get that information, I will list it here and let you know. Okay. And finally, I welcome your questions and comments, truly. I, I do. So please feel free to contact me with these or any other concerns or issues or if you want to talk, that's great. Um, via email or during my office hours. And if my office hours don't work for you, get in touch and hopefully we can find a, another time to meet via Zoom. Okay. And here we have Steve Sasson in 1975 with his invention, the first digital camera, and it recorded to a cassette tape. Some of you have probably never even seen a cassette tape, but uh, that's what I grew up with listening to music. And of course, he's showing some more modern cameras. Photographic resources, if you have the need, here are some local uh, photo stores. There aren't that many left anymore, which is sad, but we have a few, Palo Alto and in San Jose, uh, Kaufman's cameras down in San Mateo, up in San Mateo, pardon me. Um, and then uh, some online sources, b &H Photo, which is a huge photo store in New York City. It takes up one full city block. Uh, freestyle photographic supplies down in Los Angeles. Um, both of them are excellent. And finally, a course summary here uh, at the bottom. So on. Also, one listing, read this before you submit your assignments. So please do that. Okay, so back to the top of our page here on Canvas. And uh, I want to go to the modules. And in the modules, the first one is welcome, a welcome, which uh, I'm doing now, but in greater detail. Um, so here is the welcome page. And uh, the first part says essentially what the syllabus says about what the class is, and then how the class is structured. Um, obviously, it's an online class, ac access through Canvas, and it is divided into modules. Each module deals with a photographic topic and contains readings, lectures, lecture notes, and in some cases, videos. The modules are presented in chronological order. That is in the order in which you are to access them. This does not mean that you cannot look ahead, so to speak, and it's fine if you do so. The order of the assignments mirrors the order of the module subject. So, the first assignment, for example, is on depth of field, which we haven't talked about. Uh, and you need to, <clears throat> excuse me, go through the modules <coughs> and read them in order to get enough information to do this first assignment. So here in the modules, there's uh, a welcome, and then resources and other information, Canvas resources, counselor information, information on peer reviews, um, which we'll do for the assignments, a breakdown of topics covered in the exam, which you'll need at the end of the term, and finally, a, a note on recommended texts and readings. So uh, here again, I list the recommended text and note again that it's recommended not required. So you do not have to purchase the text, nor are you responsible for any information that is not given to you in the modules. These readings are supplemental and are not meant to take the place of the readings, lectures, and video, videos and other information provided in the Canvas modules. And then here are the recommended readings listed. And these recommended readings are also listed in the modules as they pertain to the subject matter of those, of those modules.
Okay, so Zoom meeting, this is my office hour uh, invitation. And I'll also post um, this, this announcement, this introduction, probably here under the welcome. Uh, video links. So for your written assignment, you will need to watch two videos and briefly write about them. And of course, you're welcome to watch any and all of the videos anyway. They're on different photographers, and I think they're very interesting. I hope you do, but anyway. And then the, the uh, modules containing the class information. The first one, basics, the camera, um, some other controls such as the ISO and the ASA, and there are lectures, class notes, and then as you see down here, the recommended reading. The second module covers lenses. So what lenses are, how you use them, uh, different types of lenses. And again, there are readings and a lecture, my class notes and recommended readings in the text. The third module covers uh, how you control the amount of light entering the camera. So the two mechanisms that are used, um, the aperture and the shutter. So these are discussed in the readings, lectures, class notes, and again, the, the uh, text readings. The fourth module puts those things together in, in what's called equivalent exposures and then bracketing. Um, so using the aperture and the shutter settings together in order to make a proper exposure. One that is not and then the fifth module covers depth of field, which is the first assignment. And you need to have the information from the first four modules in order to understand depth of field and specifically to understand how to make the changes that you need to do for depth of field and following that, of course, how to actually do the assignment. Okay, So that information is here in the depth of field module. But again, you need the information from the previous modules you know, to, to build on those in order to do the depth of field assignment. The next module is co color temperature and white balance, um, which I don't, I'm not going to discuss here in our introduction, but is, is very important in, in making a successful image. Uh, so, so that will follow the depth of field uh, topic in order of the class. You, you do not have an assignment with respect to color temperature and white balance, but it is covered on the exam. The next assignment is motion, and that is the seventh module here. So how to, how to deal with motion in photographic images, how to freeze motion, how to show motion as a blur, uh, why you might want to do that. And the final module here is portraiture and self-portraiture. And that is the third assignment. Um, so it's, you know, there aren't technical controls that you need to learn in order to make a portrait or a self-portrait per se, but uh, I've given you some articles and discussions on portraiture and self-portraiture. Um, and there's also, there are a couple of videos and also a recommended reading. Okay. So that is the basic structure of the class. As we go through um, the assignments, I will post uh, some more listings in the modules, uh, but these are the basic, the basics, okay? Um, so if you have any more questions, please let me know. But again, this is, uh, this is just an introduction. And so again, welcome, welcome, welcome to photo seven. And again, this is taking its time loading the images on the, the homepage, but 
Again, the homepage has um, our syllabus and maybe at some point these images will actually load, maybe not, but hopefully your computers will load more quickly than mine. Um, it's kind of loading. Here we go. Kind of. There's one. <laughs> there we go. So this is just the first portion of the of the syllabus with some some iconic images, uh, some overall iconic images, uh, some like this one of the twins, more a photographic iconic image. Um, but there you have it. And so again, any questions, please let me know. And the announcements are supposed to uh, load before. There we go. So and uh, an announcement about today's office hours, counselor information, again, uh, camera possibilities that you might want to consider um, if you are in need of a camera. Here are some if they, again, if they load. Um, but my first piece of advice, if you are in need of a camera, is to ask around. Ask your friends and relatives if they have a camera that they're not using. Many people, when they upgrade to a new camera, uh, just set aside their old cameras. And uh, of course, I'm sure you know of some people who are up, you know, they have upgrade fever and have to have the newest of everything. And uh, those people can be very useful and helpful if you are in need of. Don from uh, digital cameras are, you know, th the basic controls haven't changed. They've improved in terms of quality and capacity, uh, how sharp the the images can be. Um, but if you use a camera that's five years old, you know, if it was, you know, a decent camera, it will be absolutely fine for this class. Okay. So here are some, some suggestions. Uh, if you're in need of, of a camera, these ones in the first category are called point and shoot cameras, but they're not the really basic ones. They do allow you to control the aperture and the shutter speed. Um, so they're under $400, at least as of when I last checked, but, a, a, you know, a couple of months ago. Um, and I realized that $400 is not inexpensive, but cameras can be very expensive. And so these ones are, are less expensive as, as cameras go. As you can see, Canons and, and Nikons are, are listed here. They dominate the photographic market in terms of cameras. Um, but there are also Fuji's, Panasonic, and Sony cameras that are excellent cameras. And in the next category, I have cheaper DSLR cameras. So DSLR stands for digi digital SLR, single lens reflex cameras. And again, that, that, that is this type of camera, um, which have been used or very popular for the last 50 or more years. That's not to say it's the, that they are the only types of cameras that have been used, uh, but they're the most commonly seen and used. So I've listed some of the less expensive DSLRs. And as you can see, almost all of them are Nikons and Canons. Uh, also Pentax is listed. Um, so the electronics companies, those are, the companies that started out anyways, electronics companies such as Panasonic and Sony, don't really make DSLR cameras or the more advanced amateur cameras and professional cameras of this sort. Uh, but I've listed them here, uh, the ones that, that are generally under $800. And they're excellent cameras. They uh, have more functions than most of us will use anyway. There are certainly more expensive DSLRs out there, 
in the twelve to fifteen hundred dollar range, in the two to three thousand dollar range, and those are just the bodies, not including the lenses, and then up into the eight to ten thousand dollar range. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that none of us, myself included, need those camera bodies. We can do what we need to do with with these cheaper the cheaper bodies that are excellent. Um, so anyway, here are, here are uh, some suggestions. Uh, my camera is not listed here because it's older. Uh, first of all, it's just one step up, I think from the Nikon uh, D 5600. Um, and so the comparable one would be the Nikon D 7500. This is the 7100, so you can see that it's older. I got it at Costco. And um, I don't work for Costco. I'm not advertising for them, but they do have some really good deals on cameras and electronics equipment, such as memory cards. So worth checking out. Okay. Anyway, so that is one of the announcements. And again, the announcements are here on Canvas on the home page, they may or may not load, but <laughs> on my computer, but hopefully they load on your computer and they, they, they appear as I send out new announcements. In general, if I have a new announcement, I will post it both here and send out an email, okay? Because I realize that not everyone checks the candidates announcement. Here they are as you need them. And again, they should be at the top of the home page. And um, my computer may eventually get there. Hopefully, yours will get there more quickly. So that is my introduction to Photo 7. Um, again, welcome. I hope that you will enjoy the class. And again, if you have any questions, please let me know, email me uh, and or come to my office hours. I look forward to seeing you, to speaking with you, and of course, to looking at your images. Okay, have a very nice day. Thank you.